the role of the increase in CO2 in global warming. I would like to start by saying that the decrease of CO2 in the atmosphere since the beginning of the 20th century is clearly of human origin. Whatever you may have heard or read about it being of natural origin is wrong. Both the ocean and the biosphere are net sinks of CO2 due to the increase in its partial pressure in the atmosphere. The increase in CO2 is not small, it is spectacular. In the transition from a glacial to an interglacial period, CO2 increases by about 80 ppm. Since 1900, it has increased by 130 ppm. Now it's about 425 ppm, and as far as we know, it hasn't been that high for at least a million years. Is that negative? A lot of people think it is. Some of us think it is positive. The difference is how much warming we think has caused the increase in CO2. CO2 is estimated to be responsible for 19% of the Earth's greenhouse effect, but its effect is logarithmic, and the more there is, the less effect adding more has. That doesn't mean it's saturated. The atmosphere can always become more opaque to infrared radiation. Although we know that adding more CO2 will increase the greenhouse effect, we really don't know how much warming it will cause. We can calculate that if we double the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, and everything else about the climate remaining the same, there will be about 1 degree Celsius of global warming at the surface. But it is not possible for everything else in the climate to remain the same. Everything in the climate is connected, and changing one thing always causes many other things to change, so we cannot know what will happen. The response of the climate to a doubling of atmospheric CO2 is called climate sensitivity, and scientists have been trying to determine it for decades without success. Moreover, in their attempts, they make a number of assumptions that we know are not true and invalidate their work, because the IPCC believes that natural causes of climate change have played essentially no role in the warming of the past 200 years. These scientists as essentially attribute all the climate change of the past two centuries to the warming caused by the increase in CO2 mitigated by the cooling caused by industrial aerosols. But the natural factors responsible for past climate change have not ceased to operate, and there is ample evidence that they are underestimated in the models and by the IPCC for the simple reason that we do not know how they operate. Dr. Roy Spencer calculated a few years ago what the climate sensitivity would be if some of the warming was natural. The result was very telling. For a climate sensitivity of 2.2 degrees Celsius within the range considered likely by the IPCC, if only 30% of the warming were natural, the climate sensitivity would drop to only 1.3 degrees Celsius outside the IPCC's likely range. And if 70% of the warming were natural and 30% anthropogenic, a doubling of CO2 would warm the planet by only 0.5 degrees Celsius. Recall that we are still far from having doubled the CO2 that existed before human emissions from fossil fuels started. It is now possible to understand why the IPCC wants nothing to do with natural warming. Even if it is small, it completely undermines the argument that we are in a climate emergency. As I said, no one knows how much warming the increase in CO2 has caused, including me. When they tell us that our future emissions will cause a certain number of degrees of warming, they are lying to us because no one can know that. I have an opinion about this, but I want to make it clear that it is an opinion because it cannot be properly calculated. My opinion is based on a few facts. First, a general lack of correlation between CO2 and temperature over the last 50 million years and during the Holocene. Second, the total lack of response of Antarctica to the increase in CO2 over the last 200 years. This is important because the correlation between CO2 and temperature is supported precisely by the Antarctic record of the last 800,000 years, which now shows a total lack of correlation. Third, the warming of the early 20th century, which was natural and not unlike the warming of the late 20th century. Fourth, the temporal coincidence of the greatest warming in at least 600 years with the greatest solar activity in at least 600 years. Fifth, the change from cooling until 1975 to warming since 1976, just as a natural climate shift occurred, characterized by the change from cold to the warm phase of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Sixth, the coincidence of all the climatic phases of the last century with changes in heat transport. 
For all these reasons, I believe that decreasing CO2 can account for at most one third of the Earth's warming. However, as with any scientific issue under debate, it is permissible to interpret the available evidence in different ways. For this reason, and because many scientists do not know all the evidence, many believe that all the warming is due to CO2. Others, that more than half, but not all, and a few others that have less than half or none. The problem arises because the climate issue is highly politicized, and certain opinions are not allowed and rejected by those who, as scientists, should defend the right to disagree as a fundamental part of the scientific process. Thanks for your attention. If you like climate science and want to know more about it, you can buy my books, which are available at Amazon and other internet stores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel.